welcome back. Continue the discussion. Let me take you very quickly on the front page of the Star newspaper revealed the age crisis in civil service. Um, what you have that more than a quarter of the workforce is made up of people aged over 50 years. And now that is on the front page of the people. Uh, the Star newspaper. Again here, Ruto say that he's ready for dialogue with the protesters, something that we touched briefly before we went on a break. And yesterday he was in Yahuru, but immediately after that there were some protests as well, and uh, they were chanting, we are peaceful. That was the message. But gentlemen, much as this is happening, um, we've also seen a couple of arrests, you know, people being held in <coughs> comunicado, people being, you know, no one, okay, so to speak, have come out to say who actually abducted them and for what reason but why all of a sudden uh wakili you, you know um i did something in, mm. in one of the units in the masters called the art of negotiation art of negotiation yes art of negotiation is a skill and you ordinarily the negotiators the parties or protagonists in the negotiations ordinarily they they must take stock of the strength and weaknesses your strength and mm. weaknesses vis-a-vis -vis the strength and the weaknesses of your opponent, all right? Mm -hmm. and, and in this friction, we have government on one side with its massive strength and its weaknesses. It has weaknesses. A and the protesters too, mm -hmm. the Gen Zs have their strength mm -hmm. and their weaknesses. You see, in the fact, the fact that they're disorganized or they don't have a leadership in itself is a strength and common in all protests in this country, the history of protests in this country. But that also heralds an, a weakness of its own kind on account of the fact that uh, I, I do know that news and political clamor in this country has its own shelf life. And therefore, t for you to be persistent, to be insistent, to be continuous, you, you need a reason for that, mm. something that fuels you that is uncommon. And what we've seen is even protests have the limit mm. in, in this country. The, the protesters must therefore for them to be consistent and persistent and to threaten the establishment must find a reason to keep the fuel burning. Mm. The government, m now that it knows the rhetoric of protests and news in this country, mm -hmm. must find a way to, you know, to, to limit or, or to stretch the elasticity mm. of the protestation until such a time when then it dissipates, one. Two, if it doesn't dissipate, mm -hmm. then that which you ask for, we pull the rug under your feet. We are doing it for you. Mm. And the overhaul, because that's where the clarion coalesces, the clarion call coalesces, and that is the budget. The budget must somehow <coughs> appease to the protesters, the youth, the Gen Zs. It must address its issues. You know, in a budget, you collect money. It's basically a, 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 a transaction. Mm. When I give you money, I'm in a hotel and give you my money, yes. and I want tea, white tea, black tea or coffee, you give me that. That's what I want. You give me that. Mm -hmm. But you, you, can't, you can't basically take the money, and I see you burning my hands on the side with my money, and I'm watching. Today, tomorrow, the other day, what will I do? I'll rise and I'll protest. This is what happens. When I give you money as a government, I give you my money. What I want is the hospital to be equipped, to be built, the road to be... And if you can, then mm. explain to me, mm. which is called accountability. That Show is me exactly, what you've done with money. And that it's is exactly basically what a the purchase Gen Z, transaction. We are purchasing services. Yes. It's not for free. From, from what we've heard even from Number the Number two, yes. let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. Okay. We are not in this country for free. We're not in this country for free. We're in this country because we pay to be here. Look, we pay taxes to be in this country. Otherwise, where would we be? We expect, therefore, in this environment in which we live, mm. that, that, that which we are paying for, we are compensated. Compensation is organic. It is, it is a fact. It's supposed to be seen. How are you compensating me? Okay. So, yeah. so the point is, yes. <laughs> either I'm, being, I'm getting that which I pay for, I don't. The, po the point is, we do not know what we are paying for. That's really the protest. Jesse Yes. He doesn't know what he's paying for, <laughs> but he pays to be in this country. All right. Uh, this brings the introduction, and uh, I love this argument. When you look at President Uhuru, mm. he had a docket called the Presidential Delivery Unit, right? And uh, uh, in this government, uh, you, uh, it's, 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 it's an advice, all right? You cannot come and say to Metenga, to Meweka, 
tutafanya and then still come and tell us i have done there needs to be a middleman mm. a middle person to show the delivery here is the chai all right and mandazi is coming now if you've been in a relationship with a lady who has been cheated and lied to before when you come again even when she it's like what they say akiona kamba anaona nyoka so they, they fear that so this generation the protest that is happening between the millennials and the gen z's particularly is because they have been lied to they have been told they have been given promises and then you don't see the results so the delivery aspect and i'm uh, it's my prayer if he gets time to talk to the gen z's, gen z's I, I would say create another arm within mm. government that will show your delivery this ICT hubs bring people you know I, I, it's sad when a guy wandudi who has done engineering and you said serikalia mamamboga this guy is, uh, was talking he, was, he mentioned uh, the guy he has who has done uh, doctor about for seven years and he's now selling bananas and stuff those are the people you should bring on board so that people begin to see you are doing it and you, you see last year the finance bill uh, you you want to ride on and the, the progresses of the last year finance bill mm -hmm. the way the economy grew you know we are 29th in the world and everything but you see now this year the gen z's and the millennials they have realized yo we have been taken for a ride for too long mm. so my take my take to the government is you need to find a way and bring that and also to note what you said about the church mm -hmm. now yesterday you find them in church and what they are echoing the mothers and the fathers are clapping because this generation from 202 when moi must go they came into development they saw it with kibaki they are seeing it with, they saw it with uhuru now they want to see it with you, you know, so if if as to be us fadela do you know they received free education uh -huh. Now, with that free education, <laughs> and now they have all these degrees, mm -hmm. they want jobs. They want all this. So for me, we, I, I go back, we're getting to a place of politics of accountability. The president, I'll separate the president and mm -hmm. the presidency. Mm -hmm. He needs to overhaul his presidency. Mm -hmm. Because everyone who stands out to talk, they're just uh, doing harm to him. Mm -hmm. And for him, he needs to create another unit so that these Gen Zs and the millennials, we can begin to say, who we are seeing... Home? Who will go home from his cabinet? Let's listen to what the president said yesterday uh, in Nyahuru. Let's listen to that. I am very proud of our young people. They have stepped forward tribeless. They have stepped forward peaceful. And I want to tell them, we are going to engage them. We are going to have a conversation so that together we can build a greater nation. The Gen Z's have... Kill it. Take it from there. He's proud of them. He's going to have a conversation moving forward. Yeah, but, but the problem is he needs to be trusted. He, he needs to have that image of trust. Mm. You see, if you break trust or you threaten a contract, you threaten an agreement, what else would people do? The protest should be read as people enforcing mm -hmm. or demanding that which they were promised against which they gave their vote. Because a vote, you can sell your vote if you want. But when I give you my vote against a promise, I expect the promise to be executed. Why is that not executing it? So the question of trust here, mm. a trust that has been broken or has been substantially threatened. Yeah. So, so when he, we, I like what the president said because that's the way to go. Mm. He, you can, he, he could have chosen to say, you should be home. Otherwise, I'm going to bring the general service unit and the police as against you. Yeah. Th that's one choice. Mm. But he chose, which, which, is, which is wise, he chose to say he's engaging. So the political decibels are going to be torn down. All right? Mm -hmm. That should first be in parliament. Mm -hmm. What is the issue? The budget. You, you can't say the budget by all means will pass. L let us have a discussion on it. Who, who, who is going to pay for that budget of fund? It is us. Mm. Like I said, we're not in this country for free. And therefore, the first clarion call is that which we're complaining about must be addressed first to show good faith yes. as we speak. Yes. That good faith has not been displayed by anyone. The mere talk of engagement when the issue is still as it is, is going to pass because they have the numbers, mm -hmm. th then it means we're not addressing the issue. There's no need to talk when that which you're complaining about it is still being it is persisting in its pursuit to be passed, mm. right? Mm. But, but this is the point. 
You see, the societal edifice is wrapped with layers. Mm -hmm. We have rich people up there. We have the middle class with their own upper middle, lower middle, and all. Then mm -hmm. we have the bottom billion, the most dangerous class, bottom billion. Ordinarily, a Kenyan, a voter is a tool of trade mm -hmm. for a politician. Mm -hmm. The tool of trade upon which then you use, you cajole, you seduce, you do whatever you want for purpose of ascending into power. Mm -hmm. When you get there, the indiscipline starts with the politician, not, not pursuing the ideals of the agreement that we had yeah. when we were electing into power. Mm. That's the abuse. That, that's the defilement that politicians impose on its people. When you put there, it's good faith because we laugh, we mm -hmm. dance for you. Mm -hmm. Didn't we sing? Didn't we sing? Mm -hmm. Didn't we dance? Didn't we wear <coughs> t-shirts of colors? D didn't you seduce us? Didn't we agree with you? When we agree with you, yes. then you defile that agreement. You defile it. You abuse us. Article 1 exists. What we are saying is we need to enforce the social political contract. That's what the Gen Z's are saying. And in doing so, you do not do it by pleasing a certain clientele base up there, hoping that the ones who will fund you... Who is, who is being pleased? Yes. Who is being hoping pleased? that you can't take money to people merely because they sponsored you or funded you during elections. Okay. You, you have to deal with the entire societal okay. fabric. For, for, uh, and, and wait, for wait. For you can't say this. Now, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me say this. It is impossible. <laughs> It is impossible for you to come and tell us on our face, yes. this government has shares. Which shares? Which shares? Which shares? You see, the clip you've just seen, it goes again to reiterate the fact, I yes. told you, between the president and the presidency. Because yesterday, other MPs were saying, these Gen Zs don't know what they are doing. We feed them. We pay for their school fees. But you see, the president is wise enough to say, I'm willing to have In a conversation. Fact, a woman who said exactly. Gen Z exactly. You get On so, record. Oh, so mm -hmm. he, he, he needs the way he's streamlining his people. Mm. And before we went for the break, he, he, he needs to create another arm. You know, you ask the question, who is going to go home and the likes? Mm. So for, for adding to his point on, he needs to be trusted. Okay? Mm -hmm. Come down, create another avenue where these people can put you to task for this that you're doing because he, he has good ideas he has good he, he wants to implement but we for the, that position is only for one person how many how this for almost eight million plus let me tell you over the weekend there were fifty thousand plus on twitter space discussing exactly you so see, a position for just one person will not you know it's not for one person mm. not for one person power devolved right now for example, uh, some of the visions that the president has for the youth yes. in terms of building the ICT hubs in the counties, all right? So if you have people in those counties, I mean, if your party is there as UDA, all right, mm -hmm. the constituency of the Gen Zs and the millennials in that area, they put, that, they put the vision to task to see it implemented. Mm -hmm. In Nairobi, the same, all right? So you have a caucus of people who are willing to put you to, ta to task to test, to test and see if what you're saying is true. And what he's saying about in terms of conversation, mm. he, he is, he is a master orator. You know, like he said, he, 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 he can charm. So let him go personally and talk. You know, when he was going for elections and he was campaigning, President Ruto would come and sit down and talk to you. Mm. Let him do that now and listen to these guys because even as we're talking as per now, they don't know what You know what do. I'm feeling? Yeah. The generation of the protesters are not looking. They don't want a conversation. That phase of conversation is long gone. They want an action. They want something done now. Now, I agree with you. Yes. But now we're discussing on the way the president said he wants to have a conversation. Calm these guys down because they are tired. They don't want a conversation. So what is going, to, they want, what they is going to calm them down? That is my question. What is going to calm them down, Wakili? Yes. The, 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 I think... The budget is what has coalesced the national psyche mm. into one big movement of we do not want this budget and we have to look at our country and have, have, have action on it. Yes. They're asking for action. But then the time for conversation is ordinarily the campaign period. All right? Mm -hmm. Th that's where lies are thrown left and right. So we know that. But we do know mm. that there's things that you can't lie to. 
there are things that you can't lie mm -hmm. to. But let me put it this way. I do think the president will take control of this. I do think he has a chance. I don't think it's all lost for him. It's not all lost. Mm. I think the instruments of, of discussion, the, 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 the normal instruments mm. where we trusted them for purposes of engaging on behalf of society, those ones are, are the ones that are not trusted. One is parliament. Yes. Parliament is the weakest link here. It's supposed to represent the people. It is not representing the people. Mm -hmm. It is not representing the people. It is representing itself. It, it is a motley assemblage of persons mm. that look at their political survival as opposed to the people. Mm -hmm. Number two is the church. The church has a problem because it is organizing itself into a commercial entity yeah. where then the benefits are the monies that come. So if you have an enterprise that brings money, people bring money, including politicians, mm -hmm. whatever they get the money, then you survive. And the third is basically, of course, the, the government representation itself. Mm. We don't trust it. And if that is the case, mm. therefore, the, we, we then can't have them mm. debate for us or, or speak for the Gen Zs, which is this, that this is not a solution that is going to be, to, to be in parliament. Yeah. The president is right. The president is right and everyone is right when he says this thing is in parliament, parliament let's decide. That's okay because that's the law. But legitimacy is not that. Legitimacy is for you to be able to be seen as a president, as an MP. Let me tell you, it's possible for you to be a father in the house. But that's a name. The father in the house is that the one that provides for the family. It is possible, therefore, for you to go home, enter into the house and nobody saying hi to you, nobody serving you, anything. It is also possible that when you're approaching the house, the children are running up to you <laughs> to say hi to you. The reason is, is because you are discharging yourself according yeah. to yeah. the expectation, either expressly mm -hmm. or impliedly. But when you are drunkard father, mm -hmm. you beat your wife and your children, nobody will look at you, mm -hmm. nobody cares about you, you know, and you lose okay. legitimacy. Legitimacy, okay. therefore, is more important. There's, a, there's some drunkard fathers who buy a, a quart of nyama on their way back home. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> uh, <laughs> That point you've said eh, is what I go back to what I said. Mm. We have up to 30th. The budget is the bone of contention. Mm. We have up to 30th. You can suspend it. Right now as I'm speaking, yesterday uh, one of my economic advisors called me and told me they are being told to go take their children uh, home because of what is going to happen tomorrow. Mm. They shut down. All right? And so if, if you have the heart and we want to trust mm -hmm. you, Okay, just to spend tomorrow, we have like up to 30th. Then the people will say, he, did, he wants to talk. Let's listen to him talk. But if you continue the way you did last week, mm -hmm. all right? So if you're in goodwill and you say as a president you want to talk, suspend the business tomorrow. Do you think it's even possible to suspend say, the entire finance bill? No, you know, you are pushing it to a few days to show you are willing to talk. All right? Because it's a small window. It's a small window. And if Kenyans are going to get to the place where they can trust yes. you, they can trust you, you also have to show. You also have to show. And don't, you know when President Moy said, uh, Wanjiko, all right? Nowadays, let me just call them Shiko. Shiko Amechoka. Mm. Shiko Amechoka. And if Shiko Amechoka, Shiko Akiambu, Shiko Western, Shiko Mombasa, if Shiko is tired, find a way to communicate and show that you're willing to meet mm. them halfway. Meet them halfway. If if that doesn't happen, you're going to uh, necessitate something that is 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 to, being irreversible. Is All right. going to be a problem. Well, you talked about the churches, and <laughs> yesterday was a serious one. Let's listen to what the clergy said. The agencies have no tribe, no religion, no class, but they are our children. They are not enemies of the nation. Ruto acknowledging that he has been watching closely the recent developments and urging the youth to come to the table to air their grievances. So to your excellency and the leadership of this country, this is a discerning moment. Not so much talking, but I think listening to one another and reaching out. Their liberation is also our liberation. If anyone sinks, if anyone drowns, 
we also drown with them. In addition, they would grant the youth time at the pulpit to speak on the finance bill. This bill seeks not only to overtax Kenyans, but also to promote oppression, which generally leads to a very poor quality of life for most people who are not as endowed as the people who are in power. The support from the church as a whole is an important thing when it comes to ensuring the agenda of rejecting the finance bill 2024 is successful. The traditional Sunday hymns temporarily set aside as the congregation was led by the youth in chanting anti-finance bill slogans. A similar script played out at the All Saints Cathedral Church. Provost Reverend Evans Omolo reiterated the need for the government to engage the youth on the bill. And therefore we applaud the courage of the young people to come out and to express themselves, an expression which is protected in the Constitution under Article 37. He added that the church has opened its grounds as an emergency medical center for demonstrators who may be injured or need medical attention during the protests slated for next week. All Saints Cathedral is historic and we stand on the shoulders of our forefathers who went before us, who stood for what is right and opposed what is unjust. And that remains our position that we will stand with what is right. Youths in the church called on the Inspector General of Police to take responsibility over incidents of brutality, even as they rallied their peers to show up for the demonstrations next week. One thing to the, to the Kenyan police, Tafadali, it's a very peaceful protest. I have a problem specifically, na closes in affect our parents, na our Jewi. Come at the close for land ownership. That's a crazy one. This is not a tantrum of Generation Z and whatnot. All of us are Kenyans, yes. all of us are citizens, all of us are saying something, and all of us, we are not ignorant. Outside the venue where President William Ruto was attending the consecration of ACK in Yahururu Diocese, Bishop Samson Gashadi, youths chanted anti-finance bill slogans. In excessive force, but we also urge them not to be lawless and destroy or mime or kill. To the Gen Z uh, generation, I have been followed all through and I've heard you cry and concerns and please forgive us where we have failed to you as a church. Gentlemen, a full package there. Wakili, what have you picked? I've picked one thing. In one of their speech, they had a formal and written speech, and they addressed the media, something that has never happened. Number two, the gentleman who had a Kenyan flag in charge, raised in hand for like five seconds and chanted, reject the finance bill. And then the church also said, if we sink, we sink with them. If we drown, we drown them. Olesa Peter also coming out and said the political class must listen to the youth. Let's talk about the, ch the church and the youth. Wakili, go ahead. Now, th th there, is, there is a general agreement mm. in the entire societal psych and edifice that the economic environment mm -hmm. is oppressive to the people and the finance the finance bill is contributing and fueling into it. Mm. That, that's, that's, however, it's either it's been marketed negatively or it's the truth, but the fact remains that there's that agreement. Now, there are three groups. The elderly, mm -hmm. who then have transited from the Moi era to the Kibaki, to Uhuru, and probably have a more stable mm. um, emotional approach to it. And therefore, they probably wait, and traditionally they've waited until the next election mm -hmm. to have another debate or review of the five-year term of the presidency and the government. The other one is the middle class and the working class and those that are in business. Those ones are ordinarily hesitant to make a move on account of the fact that it is, it is an instability 
um, to the economic well-being, um, to the fact that they need to fend for their families, uh, and so on and so forth. <coughs> they have businesses, they have to go to work, and that disruption, and the businessmen came out to say they've lost over two billion in the last protest. Mm -hmm. Then there are the youth, the ones that go to church, the ones that are chanting, the Gen Zs, and, and those that are within um, you know, the component of, of that group. Those ones don't go to work because they have no work. Because they, are, they had work, they will have joined the other group. Yes. They don't have businesses because they are the businesses, they will have gone to the other group. They have nothing mm. to lose, nothing. Because they, they don't have a job. They don't the reason is yes. they have nothing to lose. But <clears throat> if there was something to lose, mm. it was the hope for a job. If I disrupt it, I won't get the job. Of which even that is, hope is that, not there. That is so there's nothing to lose even in the hope. So they have that stored energy. Meaning, Church. wait, <laughs> meaning even today, <laughs> even today and tomorrow, yes. they have nothing to, 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 to go for, to hope for, to wait for. You okay. can't get them to wait. Okay. So for them, it is now. That's yes. why you can see... All of us would want to be there to be able to say what they are saying. Mm. But it's because some of us are in certain groups. The first, the group that therefore seems to be the prime mover mm. of the protest are the ones that have nothing to lose, have no jobs, and have no future. I, and therefore, they have no promise for the future, notwithstanding. I will, I will come back to you, Fadela. But you yeah. also tell me something. You know, even the L LSK has come out, even the pressure groups and the civil society have also come out to support the Gen Z, saying the police brutality must stop, the, you know, police harassment, and, you know, all that must stop from the legal point. The doctors, the doctors, the the doctors church. on the oh, side. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, The, the church, huh? uh, you remember in the days of Moi? Yes. Mo would get to church and would say to Sifanya si yes, hapa tuende pale nje. Mm -hmm. so, but now the guys in the political class took advantage of being in church and now they began bringing politics in church and mm -hmm. I saw like the other day Mushimu Asudi while he was speaking the father said listen uh, tone down the politics if you don't have anything to tell us about God no. So there's also that thing yes. it's a purging mm -hmm. from the altar. Mm -hmm. The purging from the altar is you guys also need God, but don't bring politics in the altar. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And I applaud the church for coming in in support with the Gen Zs. I saw the likes. All, all the churches were there. Even yesterday, there were protests of the Christian Gen Zs mm -hmm. on the street. And they were chanting and, and, and saying how uh, without Jesus, no justice. You know? There was that element yesterday. So for me, when I look at it, I, I see... My worry is, my worry is, is that I hope that the Gen Zs will, this movement will not be hijacked because it is, it is legit, it is purging from the altar mm. to, the, to the finance bill. Everybody is coming into accountability. And I, I'll never forget uh, one of my mentors, the former president of Zambia, Chiluba. He told me the tripatriate principle. And he told me, I've never forgotten, he said, uh, just like you have body, soul, and spirit, uh, the nation also has a body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And he told me the body of a nation is the people. The soul of a nation is the government. And the spirit of a nation is the church. So when the spirit man, the, uh, the spirit man, when, when you are sober, you make sober decisions in your soul. And so you will do things that are in, in tandem with positivity. Mm -hmm. But when the church is not in place spiritually, mm -hmm. then the government has a heyday. So what Gen Z's are doing, they're taking us back to making sure that the altar is for God's purposes. And if you come, we need to feed you spiritually so that when you go, you make conscious decisions that will affect the people uh, positively with the finance bill. So you don't run helter skelter. Yeah. And for that cause, I appreciate the, the purging within the church mm. so that if you have something to say, Stand there and say, I, I came and I need you to pray for me. We are going to, we, we are making sure the bill is there. We need God's wisdom. That we will do. Mm. That we will do. But again, Wakili, LSK came out. Pressure groups also came out. We saw the police brutality. Um, a couple of people, uh, two, three people have died so far because of police brutality, gunshot wounds, and etc. Something that somebody would say they did, they came out, they were unarmed. And now this is the time that, that the legal point now cri cripple in. That at what point are police going to make sure that much as these protesters are also coming up, the only thing they have is just a bottle of water probably and their bandana and their placards. And the phone. 
and their phones. So why do you shoot someone dead who is actually exercising his or her 30, Article 37 and 30, Article 33? M many times in court, um, I've seen policemen arraigned mm. for shooting and killing illegally or maiming illegally. And let me tell you, the most humble person you're going to see before court is that policeman accused of those infringements. Mm. They, they, they have nobody to, to protect them. You know what I see when I see policemen doing that? I, I pity them. Because ordinarily, you will do, you will execute the order or whatever you perceive at that instance as mm. the best way out. Mm. To shoot, to, to kill, to maim. But when you are taken to task, and invariably they will, mm -hmm. because we have so much evidence now circulating, which, which, which is being collected, we are collecting, is that when you get to court your own, the president is not coming to defend you, the MPs are not coming to defend you, your own commander is not coming to defend you. In fact, the record statement as against you, the pistol you used, how many, the ammunition you discharged, um, the, the, there is a whole report from the medical uh, field, a post-mortem report that then goes against you and so on and so forth. And therefore it is evidence against you by as the same an, government, as an individual. by the same government, and you're going to be jailed as an individual. So the police then, even as they look at this as part of the work, mm. there is individual responsibility you're going to take, and invariably they suffer and their families suffer on account of that moment which you discharge a bullet, which if you hadn't, that wouldn't have happened. But the constant, I think the, the most important point you're saying is how the society is coalescing, mm. is coalescing on this issue. It's an idea that's being accepted in the whole country that something is wrong. The medical, the doctors I was saying, are also providing free medical services to those who are injured. Yes. The laws, lawyers are on standby. Mm -hmm. We are on standby for those that get arrested. The businessmen, I have seen, my office is, is actually around where these protests are happening. Mm -hmm. I have seen businessmen donating water and food to the protesters. We must even cook and take food to them, to the protesters, because they're not serving themselves. Okay, they're serving a, a cause yes. that is being accepted by everyone. They are simply doing that which many have failed to do. Can we take a break? I, I, sure, sure. Let's take a break. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. Jesse Anjao, Fadela. And Wakili George Kitty with me in studio. We see the Bali.